Good morning and welcome again to our service of worship. We're so glad that you've joined with us and we trust that we'll all know God's blessing as we worship him together. The Book of Lamentations tells us the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. with all of our ways, intricately woven into the depths of all things. You understand our thoughts from far off and know our ways intimately. As we gather to worship you, nothing is hidden from you. May we recognise your voice in our midst. As we gather to give you thanks and praise, May we cherish all of the days you have written for us. As we sing, pray and worship, grant that we may sense your presence too. Generous God, from our hearts we thank you. We say thank you for our friends and for our family. From our hearts we thank you for our church and our community. From our hearts we thank you for your church in the world. Generous God, from our hearts, we thank you for your creation, the world in which we live. We thank you for the many ways you touch our lives, for laughter, for conversation, for birdsong and frosty mornings, for the people and places in our communities who are important to us. We say thank you for times of silence and space to just be for company and chance encounters, for simple things and special moments. Thank you that you are with us in the highs and lows of life, when we are busy and when we are still, when we believe with all our hearts and when we are barely hanging on by our fingertips to our faith. You create and recreate and knit us together. And we say thank you for the gift of love given to us in Christ Jesus. Generous God, from our hearts, 
we thank you. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 4. If anyone thinks he can trust in external ceremonies, I have even more reason to feel that way. I was circumcised when I was a week old. I am an Israelite by birth, of the tribe of Benjamin, a pure-blooded Hebrew. As far as keeping the Jewish law is concerned, I was a Pharisee, and I was so serious that I persecuted the church. As far as a person can be righteous by obeying the commands of the law, I was without fault. But all those things that I might count as profit, I now reckon as lost for Christ's sake. Not only those things, I reckon everything as complete loss for the sake of what is so much more valuable, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have thrown everything away. I consider it all as mere refuse, so that I may gain Christ and be completely united with him. I no longer, I no longer have a righteousness of my own, the kind that is gained by obeying the law. I now have the righteousness that is given through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is based on faith. All I want is to know Christ and to experience the power of his resurrection, to share in his sufferings and become like him in his death, in the hope that I myself will be raised from death to life. I do not claim that I have already succeeded or have already become perfect. I keep striving to win the prize for which Christ Jesus has already won me to himself. Of course, my brothers, I really do not think that I have already won it. The one thing I do, however, is to forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. So I run straight towards the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Christ Jesus to the life of all. Amen. There is a Japanese proverb that says, my skirt with tears is always wet. I have forgotten to forget. Sounds like it should be an Irish proverb. I have forgotten to forget. We're thinking of new beginnings this January. And last week we focused on the importance of remembering. This week we're going to think about the importance of forgetting. Just as what we remember is important, so is what we forget. When negative or hurtful things happen to us, or maybe more so those whom we love. When hurtful or negative things are said to us, or we find out have been said about us, it's very easy to become absorbed or even obsessed with it. Hurt from the past can easily dominate our lives and even influence how we live now. Rabbi Burns in Tam O'Shanter talks of Kate, the wife, sitting at home while he's away on a drinking binge and says nursing her wrath to keep it warm. You can maybe imagine such a scene. You may have nursed your own wrath to keep it warm. Just when thoughts of someone or some incident seem to be receding, you rake it up again to keep it current, to keep it warm. We all know that nursing grudges, unforgiveness, causes us more damage than anyone else. But there are so many things we find so hard to forget. We're often encouraged to forgive and forget. It's easy, it trips off the tongue very lightly. And some people will say, well, I, I will forgive, but I won't forget. And others will say, well, if you truly forgive, you will forget. To forgive is difficult, to forget even more so. William Barclay recalls the famous Scottish poet and literary critic, Andrew Lang, who wrote and published a very kind review of a book by a young man. The young man repaid him with a bitter and insulting attack on Lang. 
Three years later, Andrew Lang was staying with Robert Bridges, the poet laureate in Scotland. And Bridges saw Lang reading a book by the same young man who had so disrespectfully attacked him before. And he said to Lang, why, that is another book by that ungrateful cub who behaved so shamefully to you. To his astonishment, he discovered that Andrew Lang's mind was completely blank on the whole matter. He had completely forgotten the bitter and insulting attack. To forgive, said Bridges, was the sign of a great man, but to forget was sublime. But wasn't Lang a happy man? He had completely forgotten. Forgetting is a great blessing, but our minds are not always able to completely eliminate a particular event from our consciousness. But you know, it does help not to replay it over and over and over again in your mind. An emotional wound like a physical wound will heal properly if we don't continually pick at the scab until it heals. To forget is to stop picking at the wound. When a wound heals, it will leave a scar, but the pain will be gone. It's spiritually dangerous for us repeatedly to tell others and ourselves that we will never forget how we were treated or what so-and-so did to me. To repeat it is to peel the scab and reopen the wound. It's better to forget it. I saw this piece of advice in Bible reading notes. Listen to what it says. Don't forget the smallest offence or slight. Keep score of all wrongs done to you. Be sure to remember each petty statement made about you in the past. Cultivate your garden of grievance each day. Take a few minutes before you get out of bed each morning to recite to yourself the names of the people who have offended you and the nature of their offences. When you're driving alone in your car, use that block of time to recall the names of your enemies and to make preliminary plans for getting even with each of them. Paste the record of your ruffled feelings in your private book of remembrance. Save up grudges and collect grievances like a stamp or coin collector. Display them to others with pride. You will soon learn how easily grievance collecting can become a lifetime hobby that will blend into your total lifestyle. Soon you will find that spare time is not enough for grievance collecting. You will look forward to retirement so that you can give complete time to such a demanding hobby. The most lasting value of cultivating the art of grievance collecting is that if you are persistent and undeterred, you will get a more accurate preview of hell than could be acquired in any other way. And hell is the happy hunting ground to which all master grievance collectors go. Blunt, but makes a very good point. Nelson Mandela famously said, holding an unforgiving spirit was like drinking poison and hoping that the other person dies. Jesus told us to forgive. He quoted the Old Testament. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, forgive. And that forgiveness extended to our enemies. Now all of that is difficult. So why would Jesus ask us to do it? Well, first he led by example on the cross as he was dying. He called upon God to forgive his murderers. But Jesus loved us enough to die for our sins, to take the punishment that should be ours. He loved us 
so that he would ask us to do such a difficult thing. Why? Well, because he knows it's for our good. Because he wants us to be free and happy like Andrew Lang. The Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians says that all his knowledge, his birth, his credentials as a proud Pharisee was as nothing to him compared to knowing Christ and his salvation. He says he regards everything as rubbish, save knowing Christ as his Lord. And then he uses this image of an athlete in a race, pressing on, moving forward for Christ. And the important point was forgetting what is behind. I press on towards what's ahead. And like Paul, every Christian should be aiming forward, aiming towards what lies ahead. Now, it's important to note that in biblical terminology, to forget doesn't mean to fail to remember. To forget means no longer being influenced by or affected by. In Hebrews 10 and 17, God promises their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. He's not saying he will conveniently have a bad memory. What he's saying is I will no longer hold their sins against them. Their sins can no longer affect their standing with me or influence my attitude towards them. So forgetting these things that lie behind does not suggest an impossible feat of mental gymnastics through which we try to erase all our sins and mistakes of the past. But it does mean that we break the power of the past by living for the future. We cannot change the past, but we can change the meaning of the past. There were many things in Paul's past that could have been a burden to hold him back, but instead, they became inspirations to speed him forward. The events had not changed, but they no longer had any power or influence over him. Too many Christians, too many of us, are shackled by regrets of the past. We're trying to run the race by looking backward. No wonder we fall. No wonder we get in the way of others. And some Christian runners can be distracted by the successes of the past, not failures. And this is just as bad. The things which are behind, says Paul, must be set aside and the things that are before must take their place. So where are we in all of this? Behind all of us are successes and failures, regrets, traumas. We have to throw them off. Don't allow them to influence our today or our tomorrow. You can't run a race looking backwards and you can't live the Christian life looking backwards either. Like the Apostle Paul, we throw off all the things that hinder. We forget it. And it would help us in moving forward into 2021 with all its opportunities to focus on the words on our lovely notice board at the front of the church covered in snowdrops. They're from scripture too. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation the old has gone and the new is here. Once we give our lives to Christ, we become a whole new creation. God wipes the slate completely clean. God says he remakes us and remembers our sins no more. So why don't we do the same? Forget it. Let us pray. 
Reconciling God, we pray for your world. May all that is divided by doctrine or politics, class or nationality, be united in your praise. We pray for a peaceful world where children grow up without fear, where security rests on trust rather than threats, and where nations fight against poverty rather than against each other. We pray for all in authority that those who lead us may establish right priorities and that by your wisdom and their vision the world may reflect your kingdom. Healing God, we pray for those who are ill and suffering, for all who are worried, for those who are grieving or experiencing trauma, and for a world gripped by the repercussions of pandemic. May we all know the power of Christ to sustain us, and the love of friends near and distant to support us. You know our greatest fears, our longings and our hopes. Sometimes these are expressed in so many different ways. So Lord, in your mercy, hear those prayers. Eternal God, present among us, you are with us in our gathering. You are with us in our distancing. Hear our prayers and blend our voices together. Unite us by your Spirit as we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>